Good evening. I'm Superintendent Brian Salzer, and thank you for coming out tonight to again share your thoughts and ideas on the idea of a proposed later start for the high school. I want to start, uh, as usual, by sh sharing a few thoughts, talking about the format of the night, and then I'll turn it over to you, the people, to talk, share your ideas, talk to me, ask questions, talk back and forth to each other. Um, however you want to do it, I leave it up to you. The night is scheduled from 7 to 8.30, and I promise to give you exactly 90 minutes uh, of time during this forum. And other than that, once I turn it over uh, to the room to talk or to dialogue, there are no restrictions. So um, I know that sometimes at city council or at school committee, there are time limits put on people, and that's not the way it works tonight. So I do ask that the new people who are here for the first time uh, would like to share thoughts and opinions would have the opportunity to go first. And then our regular sharers uh, certainly welcome to share after that. I want to start at the beginning to share my thoughts with you about this series of Late Start Community Forums. This is now the fourth of five, well, one more in August. And following these meetings, I will work with the school committee to make a proposal, which they've asked me to do, to bring a proposal to them in September of a late start time for the high school starting no earlier than 8 o'clock. And so I want to sort of summarize what we've done over the past uh, three community forums. And I want to share with you uh, how I feel about it. I feel like the community forums haven't done what I was hoping for them to do. I was hoping that we would have a bit more of dialogue, generation of new ideas, um, so more of a brainstorming session and less of a debate of whether it's a good idea or a bad idea, but more of um, some ingenious ideas as to how we can do it. Uh, I was hoping, to tell you the truth, I was hoping you'd make the decision easy for me. I was hoping there would be sort of a groundswell of support on one side or the other, that people would come out and I'd hear the voice of the community and they would help to guide the decision making. We're not getting a lot of that, and so I want to change the direction a little bit. You know, we do have the people, hi Andy, uh, who are here each time and share their thoughts, and rather than hearing the same things over and over again about the importance of teenagers getting more sleep, I'd like to hear the, I'd like to have people contribute uh, opinions on good ideas or uh, for the late start time and the benefits of it, some, 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 something to convince us that this is absolutely the right thing to do and this is how we should do it. Feeling after the third one that I wasn't quite getting the voice of the community that I was looking for, we sent out a survey. And there are plenty of critics about the survey, I understand that, I'm not a professional survey maker. However, we did send out 4,000 surveys and we did receive back um, 2,100 uh, surveys, so a pretty good sample back to us like the survey or not, it did reveal some pretty important insights. And I want to share some of those now. I also have packets that I'll hand out after my introduction. We can look at the data more completely. For those of you who remember the survey, there were four choices. There is the current schedule. There was an option of just moving the high school and that had a dollar amount attached to it. There was the option of keeping the three-tiered busing system, which was a no cost but moved each of the three levels of school start time. And then there was a third option which created a, a hub busing so the kids would ride together, use the elementary schools as a transfer point, and then bus the kids in. And though that was initially thought to be a savings or even a break-even idea, as we costed it out, there was a small cost to that. What the survey, regardless of um, how we feel about how the questions were asked, what the survey revealed to me was that no one is looking for an option that costs money. There's a recognition that the school's budget is very tight and we don't want to trade off a uh, busing system for staffing or materials in our schools. So that became clear to me and I think that was pretty good for uh, pretty good results of that survey. I want to share with you, again I have packets for you that I'll hand out and just share with you an overview of some of the results of the survey. When we looked at the total results, 57% voted to keep the current schedule. 29% voted for the option that had no cost, um, but moved all three schools start time. When we looked at just the students, the middle school and the high school students, 
again, coincidentally, 57% voted to keep the, the schedule the way it is now, and 25% voted for the option, the no cost option, to move all the start times. We looked at the parents. The parent responses and the surveys went to parents in elementary, middle, and high school. 51% voted to keep the current schedule, where 37% voted to investigate the option, the no cost option. So to me, that one was interesting that it's really 50-50. Um, the parents who returned the survey, 50% like the current schedule, and 50% were interested in some kind of change. Of course, the majority looking at a change that had no cost option. Then we disaggregated the data to faculty responses. I had 296 responses. 66% of the faculty voted for no change to the schedule. They wanted us to keep the current schedule. Whereas 25% went with option two um, to, again, the no cost option to move all of the tiers. So what this tells me, again, is that there is some interest in investigating a change to the start time. There is no interest in doing it if it's going to cost money and take resources away from the schools. But again, it seems to me overwhelming. The majority of people would like us to leave it as is. So after this survey, I went back to Nancy Athis and I said, given that people are only interested in a no cost option, put it back to your faculty. Put it back to the faculty and I want to hear from teachers and from the administration, if the choice is 7.30 or the, the new three-tiered system, which would be an 8.30 start, what would the faculty want? 55 teachers responded to the survey, 34 wanted to stay the same, 21 wanted to change it to 8.30. So again, looking at 60%, 40% uh, um, feedback. And again, Nancy Athis and Brian Lombardi vote to keep it the same. They are not um, looking or advocating for changing the high school start time. However, through this process, we've learned more than that. We've learned uh, more about the busing system. And because we've now taken the suggestion from the community to overbook the buses uh, as far as passes, to put more people on the buses, we are going to, we've made a move to do that. We've actually started to work on that now. So if we know that there are 55 students scheduled for a bus and they have bus passes, but we know that maybe only 12 are gonna ride the bus, we can then put 84 kids with bus passes on that bus and try to put 35 or 40 kids on the bus. So that is the work that Joy Winnie is doing right now. And that's important because whether we change the high school start time or not, we're gonna have a more efficient transportation system. And that's a pretty good outcome of this series of meetings. We're also looking at an idea that apparently was uh, being researched within the past two years about extending the elementary school days by 20 minutes. And if we do that, we can also uh, improve the current busing system. So if there's no change at all, and we, do, we are able to negotiate to have the elementary school day lengthened, that does help our current transportation system or if we move the three-tier system to change the start times of all the buildings, it also helps us. And increasing instructional minutes at the elementary lead to improved student achievement. So that is, uh, is a good outcome from this series of meetings. So going forward, I'll have one final forum in August. I'll bring the school committee the proposal. In September, school committee will make a vote, and then we will move on. And either we will make no change and if we vote to make no change to the start time, then I will ask for this to be tabled for a period of time so we don't continue to spend our time and resources investigating this. If we choose to move the high school start time to later, if the school committee decides to vote in that direction, then we'll form an ad hoc committee. We'll uh, figure out a way to put this in place and we'll involve a lot of people in making that happen. But we'll also have to hold another series of community forums because it'll be a new group of people um, who will have something to say about the change in their times who are not here tonight. So some uh, have spoken against the forum idea, not achieving what um, we hope to achieve. I do believe that we've learned some important things. But I'm open tonight to hear your ideas about how to change the 
high school start time or why to change it. And I'm also open to your ideas about the forum so that if this is not the format that is productive, then let's make a change for the August one and let's do something different. If we want to do roundtable discussions or something else, I'm open to it. So with that, anybody who wants a copy of the survey results, happy to uh, have you take one of these. And uh, Mr. McLaughlin will serve as our microphone holder. I know in this size room, we don't need microphones to hear each other. However, the television uh, audience would like to hear us. And so please use the microphone so they, they can hear us. No matter how loudly you speak from the audience, this microphone isn't going to speak it up, pick it up well enough for the people at home. Okay? Thank you. So as I said, I'd like to hear from the new people, the new voices first. And uh, let's get started. Who would like to share? Testing. Sure, Michael Di Pasquale from Woodlawn Avenue. I, I guess just one question I had, and I haven't been to a lot of these, but I was at one a few months ago, and it seemed like the vast majority, like 95% of the people that spoke were in favor of the change time, but that was a few months ago. But I wanted to ask, um, in terms of the process, that uh, the board has uh, requested that you submit a, a I don't know how to phrase it. A proposal. A proposal. Mm -hmm. And the basis for the request was what? They asked me to submit a proposal for a high school start time that starts no earlier than 8 o'clock. So it sounds like they've decided as a board that... That they'd like to review a proposal. In. Right. They'd like to review a proposal and take a vote on it. And that's based on input from who? What in other words, to me, it sounds like the, the community has already given them indication that they should proceed with this in some, some way. Yeah, a certain uh, demographic of the community has certainly shared their opinion emphatically with the school committee. And this has been studied, researched, sent to committee for, depending on who you ask, between six and nine years so far. So I'm inheriting it here at the end of the process. It just, uh, it's just confusing to me because it sounds like in one sense if I read the paper and come to these meetings that mm. we're moving ahead with a process which has the board requesting a plan. At the same time, we're surveying and talking about this not being mm. a consensus in the community and something that is really very open to a range of opinions. But I, I don't understand. It sounds like we've already got to the point where we think this is a good thing. Most people, and the board mm -hmm. certainly thinks it's a good thing based on comments they've received. Um, I would say that the school committee, which we have one, two, school three members here uh, tonight, I'm sorry, four members here tonight, um, are interested in learning more. They're learning more information about it. But is the request to learn more or to have something on the table that they can look at and move with? The request is for a proposal, and then they will vote on that proposal. But the request for the proposal is based on the feeling from the board that this is something we should do? Well, I believe that it's because they want to learn more about it, and they also want to hear the voice of the community. Well, it just seems if you're asking somebody to give you a proposal, you've already decided that you've heard the voice of the community. And that's why they requested to have mm -hmm. something they could vote on, or look at, or mm -hmm. decide about. So I'm confused that uh, You've presented this at the beginning as something that is really kind of uh, ambiguous and there's no clear ideas, but this process has been going on for years. Mm -hmm. And the board decided at one point that we need something concrete, mm -hmm. which would be a proposal from you mm -hmm. to see how can this happen? Mm -hmm. How do we implement mm -hmm. this? So to hear now that uh, the community really doesn't want it, teachers don't want it, who wants it? It sounds like mm -hmm. we're at the point where we do want it. No, I said that from the very beginning, that through my entry plan process, where I spent four months interviewing people one-on-one -on -one in small groups, hundreds of people, um, to establish the priorities, the strengths, and the challenges of our school system, um, the high school late start time wasn't one of the priorities. And I said from the beginning that this isn't uh, something that I'm bringing forward. It's not something the high school is asking for. But there are a group of community members who feel very strongly about it, and they want the school committee to consider it. And the school committee is very interested in considering it. I didn't want to put you on the spot, but our vice chair, Stephanie Pick, is here and has offered to respond to your question. I think I really understand 
understand what, what you're asking because it sounds like the, the school committee charged the superintendent to come with back to us with a plan so that we could vote to start the high school later. School committee has looked at this over many years and based on the data that we had at that point, we, I think as a, there was some consensus that we felt very strongly that we wanted to move forward with this. We charged a new superintendent with looking at this with fresh eyes and coming to us and I think we made a, uh, we, we gave him a charge, but I think that we, and, and I'm only speaking for myself here, I'm not gonna speak for the board because we haven't discussed that. Um, I think over this year under, under new leadership, we're being brought new data and then the school committee is going to have to decide how they feel about the new data. Um, and I, I can't begin to speak to how that's going to go. I don't know what the proposals are going to be. So I think what seemed like a given to us um, when we charged a new superintendent may be in flux. I don't, I don't know, because we haven't discussed it as a group. But I think that's where the confusion may be. Um, you know, as, as the superintendent said, he came into, not, not the middle, but not quite the end. The, the, <laughs> the, the end of the middle or the beginning of the end of this uh, is what's been a long process. Uh, and I appreciated him saying that if, if, however we decide that we're going to table this, if we, don't, if we don't decide to move forward on this, that we have to table it for a year because it's taken up so much time and attention. And I think at this point, we're going to have enough data so that the school committee can um, make an informed decision and, and, um, and decide how we're gonna go forward from here. But he is charged with coming up with a plan, his best idea of a plan of how to move the start time later. Mm -hmm. And the school committee will have to decide based on all the various data that's come to us um, where we are on it today, or the day we vote. <laughs> Thank you, Stephanie. I'm curious as to um, were the uh, all the parents surveyed, or this was sent out at random, or how how was that done? Mm -hmm. The students, the parents. The we sent out over four thousand surveys. Yeah. So it was to all all the parents. Mailed to the parents, the families, the uh, parents. for kids in our school. So I guess one of my concerns is there seems to be a difference between what the responses are and what the science is, and one has to wonder. How well educated are the parents who responded to the surveys, or even the students, about the data? I mean, I think that there are two separate issues, and I don't think they should be confused. Mm -hmm. I don't think that this should just be an open you know, vote as to the popularity of it when my concern, I'm a medical doctor in mm -hmm. town, and I have a student who's going to be starting high school, mm -hmm. and I've attended the meetings, and I read the literature, and we're not going to rehash all of that, but there's overwhelming scientific medical data mm -hmm. about things like depression and mm -hmm. level of you know, learning and kids falling asleep in school and safety and driving and so many issues mm -hmm. that one has to wonder how informed and educated are these people who are responding to the surveys. Mm -hmm. And that should not be confused with the number of respondents and, and how they mm -hmm. chose. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, I just want to say I find that a little insulting. If I don't agree with you, I'm uneducated. I just I think I we have to be that. careful. We want to talk about there's lots of research. I Both sides have presented research. And I think we have to read it. And everyone has to come up with their opinion. And I, I don't want. The idea to be, if I don't agree with this side or that side, then I'm not educated. Excuse me, I didn't say that. I need to respond to that. Hey, what I did say was that I questioned whether people were informed about the issues. Not that if they disagreed with me that they were uneducated. Please don't put words in my mouth. Well. I, I, on the survey, I think that it all it talked about was here's the financial implications, period. And I think that any person who is a professional survey doer will tell you that these results are really questionable. So um, I just want to say, other, you know, we're not going to go into the research because we I, I agree that's unambiguous. Um, that just on a personal level, I've seen, you know, we're into the summer months now. I've watched my son's <coughs> sleep adjust to where it should be, and. I've got a whole new kid who's much more open to learning. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to say that the kids with learning disabilities, I do think that we need to give them every, <coughs> every um, support we can and not 
hamper them with you know these things that are easily uh, adjusted. Thank you. Right behind you. Hi, I'm sorry I was late, so I don't know what I missed. Um, I'm a parent of a ninth grade, just ended ninth, going into tenth grader. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't get the survey. So I think, number one, if you're going to do a survey, everybody should have an opportunity to contribute to it. So my son didn't get it. I didn't get it. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, I don't think this should be a decision that's in the hands of the children. Um, I think this is an educational leadership decision. Um, mm -hmm. And I want, just want to appeal to, the, to you and to members of the school committee who are responsible for the quality and the decisions that will determine the quality of the education of our children to take a stand on this, to take action on it, to take leadership on it. Um, and, you know, I'm relatively new to this issue. My gut told me in the beginning, I think it makes, just makes sense before I ever looked at the research, before I ever talked to anybody else or listened to anybody else about it. It makes sense to me that if a good percentage of the kids in high school are having trouble staying awake, et cetera. Um, the kids who get up early can, can continue to get up early. That the inconvenience, which is not inconsiderable um, for some families in changing the schedule, um, it, it's, it's an issue, but it's not, it should not be the decision-making issue. Um, we'll, we all have good heads on our shoulders. We'll figure out how to solve the, pro the scheduling problems. My understanding is that the budget issue is, is pretty much non-existent, that there are budget, there are busing plans that could do this with no increased cost. Mm -hmm. um, looking at the research myself, it just seems conclusive to me that their health, clear health and academic benefits to doing this. Mm -hmm. So I understand it's cumbersome. Um, it'll take some sacrifices. It'll take some change, some changes being made. They'll work better for some people than for others. But the core value, the core um, in, in, you know, consideration is the academic and health benefits to the kids. And I don't see that there's any question about that. Personally, my ninth grader did fine in the first semester. And then something happened. And he started. And so it's now in my house. He started having a real hard time getting to sleep at night and getting up in the morning. And he's a good kid. He's disciplined, went to bed early, and he just got tireder and tireder. And his grades in the second semester suffered. And his first class teacher contacted me to say he's just getting paler and paler. You know, he's got to get to bed earlier. That's not the issue for him. He's getting to bed early, he can't get to sleep. So anyway, you know, my personal story shouldn't drive this. None of our individual stories need to drive this, but I'm witnessing the effects because I happen to have one of those kids um, who's having a hard time. Um, but it's for the benefit of all the kids who are having a hard time that we should do this. Um, and again, my, my main um, appeal is for leadership on this issue. Um, you know, maybe it feels like politics, to folks in political positions. And I would say, you know, sometimes in politics you just you need to take a stand and do the right thing even though some people are uncomfortable or don't like it. We're not gonna get absolute consensus on this as a community. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I'm used to doing this at, at City Council, so I did my name and address and all that stuff, so sorry. Uh, my name's Jeff Finley. I live at 30, 39 Clare Avenue. Yeah, when I see the little bell go whoop, whoop, I'll know it's time to stop. No time, no time. Uh, I hear all about the later start time. I have yet to hear anybody say, what time does the day end? Because if you start at 8.30, 9 o'clock, it means you're going later. And if you're going later, everything gets pushed back. After school activities, part-time jobs, practices, whatever, everything gets pushed back. The homework gets laid on, boom, boom. Now the kids aren't getting to bed at 9 or 10. They're getting to bed at 11 or 12, and they're going back. It's, it's all you're doing is shifting the day, unless you're going to cut the day short. We are not. That's what I figured. <laughs> um, and, and 
and again, I hear all about the start time, but it sounds like it's more about selling the sizzle and not you know, the, the whole piece of it. And some students I've talked to, they're like, yeah, love to go later. But you know you're staying later. Ooh, not a good idea. All right. Um, I, I'm glad to hear that the plan will not cost any money. Um, with not hiring back elementary reading specialists or education team leaders, those people need to be hired back before we dump money into an early start time. So I'm glad that that's, that's right. not an option. The cost options are off the table now. Yeah. Um, I've had, I, I had a son go through the high school. I have a daughter in the high school, and I have one in the elementary school. So it means I've had all three of them all through. One of the issues I see um, is they're in school, they're in a class, hour and a half a day, five days a week, and they're still coming home with hour and a half, two hours of homework a night. You can't get it done in seven and a half hours during the week? Just a thought. Um, also, there's been the discussion of having high school students ride the bus with the elementary kids, and did, you said that one of the transfer points would be the elementary schools? That was one of the proposals, right? Yeah. As a, as a parent of a high school and elementary student, not a good idea at all. Mingling a 16-year-old with an 8-year-old, not not good idea at all. Um, and I've already hit that one. And then another proposal you had was moving the elementary school day back to longer by 20 minutes, correct? Right. If we were to do the no cost proposal with the three tier busing system, moving the high school later moves the start times of the middle school and the elementary schools. My daughter gets on the bus at 8.24 in the morning. Moving the, the start time, or moving whatever times, another 20 minutes, means she does not get home off the bus until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Getting an earlier start time on the backs of elementary students, not, not the way to go. And all your surveys have said overwhelming, well, 57% of the faculty, so much of the parents, so much of the students, everything is saying, stay the way it is. You haven't gotten a clear decision either, or a clear feeling either way on, on the forms. Uh, it, it appears that we're continuing to do forms until somebody actually gives us the answer that we're looking for. And I think the answer is already given to you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have a student in the back, and then we'll come back up front. OK? Yep. So as I recall, I've done the last three Wait, start forms, doing the tech for it every time. I recall last time we requested that a survey be put out. And now the survey's out. And the minute the surveys are out and they're not in someone's favor, someone's always going to get angry because it's, it, they're not getting their way. And that's, that's just how humans are. But we can't keep pushing for something that the data's here, the majority of the people don't want anything to change, and we're happy how it is. I know it's not fair to say that because most of the people want it, it's the correct thing to do. But at the same time, I'm hearing people saying that what the students want isn't important. Or maybe even not that it's not important, but that the students should be weighed less. And I don't think that's fair at all. I know I'm just a kid to you, and that I'm just a student, and that I have a lot of growing up to do and everything. But I'm the one who's going to be getting out later. I'm the one who's going to be waking up later. And not everybody wants to do that. I know some people want to, and of course the argument is, well, if you want to wake up early, go ahead. But I'm the one who's going to be getting out of school later. I'm the one who's going to be outside in the winter with no sunlight, because if you get out of school later, it's already getting dark by the time I get out of school in the winter. So there's less sunlight. Um, I don't know. I just feel like. No one's going to be happy until they get their way, and the data's here, and it's saying the majority of the people are happy, even if it's only by 1% or 2%. So back up here for the question, and then back to Andy. I think this lady made a good point. The experts should be making the decision. Has there been a round table with the staff, the educators, at any point? like? Or is it just forums? Are you, are you having separate conversations with the staff at the high school or, and the middle school and probably the elementary school, I guess, since they're all involved? Well, remember, the teachers, the staff 
are not asking for this change, and the administration is not asking for this change. So the, what we're doing is trying to hear the voice of the community so we can represent the community. Um, but there, there's no proposal from the high school to change their start time. They're not looking for that. And there's certainly no proposal on the table from the middle school or the elementary schools to change their start time. So we have to be careful if we decide to change the high school start time against the wishes of the administration. We're also changing the start times of the other four buildings, sorry, five buildings, without their request for a change too. That's what I have to be sensitive to. I'm back to Andy. So I think there's a lot to comment on, but I just want to talk about the survey a little bit, and what concerns me. Um, Brian, I, I know that you acknowledge that some people are critical of the survey, and I know that you use the word that is imperfect. The problem with the survey is not that it's imperfect. The problem with the survey is that it's invalid, absolutely, utterly invalid and meaningless. That is the problem. You put it out and you put a nice printout on these pieces of paper and you pass it around and our students are now calling it the data. It becomes a, this gentleman also referred to now we have the facts of the community. He referred to the 57% a couple of times. The problem is that you can't have a survey that's administered by people who don't know how to administer a survey. I have two kids, as you know, in eighth grade. They were told by their teacher, they were given a lecture about the costs involved, and they were told that no matter what happened, it was going to cost money. And then they were given an option. One of the options was, would you vote for a change if it didn't cost money? And they voted, or they answered the survey after they were told by the administrator of the survey that it would cost money. Several adults here have said that they did not get the survey mailed to them. I'm another adult who didn't get the sur survey mailed to him, or, and my wife didn't get it mailed to her. When you ask leading questions, which the survey is filled with, when you ask questions about one of the options costing $110,000, which nobody believes will happen anymore because previously it was based upon false information and false assumptions about state policy, uh, that's one of the options that's put forward in the survey. That's one of the first things that the students see. The end results don't mean anything. Uh, now, maybe, maybe you'll decide or the community or the school committee will decide for other reasons, other than this 57% number, uh, that we can't do it. And that's okay. But I, I, j just the notion of saying, okay, yes, there are critics. Look, I'm, I'm a social scientist. I do surveys in my professional work. I've done them for decades. I read surveys all the time. I read critiques of surveys all the time. I'm sure that you can get other social scientists to tell you exactly what I'm telling you. To put it out there when it's not valid, not the question isn't whether it's perfect or imperfect, when it's not valid, and then students pick up on it and they say, the data is out there. And he also said, the student also said that we were calling at previous meetings for a survey. I don't recall people calling for a survey. People were saying we already had survey results from three years ago, although I don't think anybody was proposing that we lean on that. This is something that has to be done on the basis of sound information and, and understanding and concern for pedagogy. Now, one final thing is that I've always considered myself a friend of teachers. I'd like to see our teachers pay a lot, paid a lot more. I think they need to be paid a lot more. If there was a survey that said, would you raise your taxes to pay the teachers more, I would say yes. But I'm not real pleased either about the notion that you go to teachers who are accustomed to a schedule, who are accustomed to a block uh, schedule, um, and going to them and saying that, how do you feel about changing your lives? Uh, when they're going to be concerned if the time changes that some elements of their block schedule might change, I'm not convinced that the prime element that's stepping forward when they make their vote, and I'm not sure how many, how many of the, student, the teachers actually voted. You gave the numbers, but you didn't tell us the percentages. I'm not convinced that that's based upon primarily a concern for the educational and health needs of our students. So again, I, I come back to what others have been saying, which is that I think we need leadership. I think the leadership has to be based on, on the, the science on the question and what is best pedagogically for our students. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Miriam Burke. I have, I'll have two kids in the middle school come September. Mm -hmm. 
nobody in my family, well, I should say the kids don't want the later start time. I don't really want the later start time either in terms of my work. I'd like to get to work before, you know, 9 o'clock when my daughter was going to elementary school. But the truth is, I know that the research shows that it's better for them and this is what they're going to need. And my understanding is also that even if the later start time results in some activities going later in the day for the kids after school, that they're still getting more sleep overall each day, that it's not, it doesn't mean that they're staying up later and then they're waking up a little bit later and that they're not getting less sleep or the same amount, but that it's actually adding um, to the amount of time that they're able to sleep and that's in their interest. So I'd be in favor of that. Um, I do want to say also that in terms of the hub, uh, the hub option, um, Howard's option or proposal, um, I don't particularly have a problem with the kids being mixed, the elementary school and high school students, but my kids had a reaction to that and they sort of fresh out of elementary school are really not comfortable with that and I just want to put that out there as a response that they had. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Renee Wetstein. I swore I wasn't going to talk, but <laughs> it just, you make me nuts, Brian. And I got to say, this is the third forum. And for you, <laughs> four? Really? And for you to say, you know, this is not what you thought was going to come out of it. I mean, the first forum that I remember was at the high school. And you started out by talking about the administration wasn't for it. And I'm shocked because I spent probably over 20 hours with Nancy and Brian. They both worked very hard with us. They wanted a later start time. So I don't know what the question you asked Nancy and asked Brian. And I don't know if it was because it was 8.30. Um, but Nancy worked with us. She, she was on the school council with us. She wanted it. She held forums. Um, I'm just shocked to hear that. Um, and I'm shocked to hear that. Many years ago, right? No, this was this past year. Oh, okay. Past year, and and um, since 2008, but she worked 2009, 2010, and we created the surveys. Um, so I'm just really shocked about that. Um, I did ask you at the last forum. I had these some ideas. You asked me to put it in writing. Um, I put that in writing to you. You kindly emailed me back that you were going to have a response to the different proposals. And the proposals weren't just from me, but actually were from Nancy Athos. Um, so I don't know if you were able to come up with a um, response to those different proposals that were no cost. Um, the biggest issue um, that I see in the high school is that it ends at 2 o'clock. And um, the kids um, have to stay for after school activities. Um, usually for extra help, especially when your kids become juniors and seniors with the AP, and there's no late bus. So kids that are taking the bus right now are really disadvantaged. And um, one of the proposals was that you'd have a late bus, and it would be um, no cost to do that. Um, so I think the way to have this, and this is what I've been asking for for so long, is to have you in the room, have Joy Winnie in the room, have the, the, the money man, have the people on the school committee that um, are interested in this. And we set aside like eight hours, you know? <laughs> really smart people. Andy, I mean, people in the community are willing to do this for nothing and sit and talk. And instead of like a forum like this, like the round table where let's figure it out. Let's figure it out. You know what? If, if we did that eight hours, you gave me eight hours with the right people in the room, and it doesn't work out, I will go away. Like my husband said, you're leaving again for another meeting? And I'm like, swear the last time. Um, so I, I just, I don't, you know, in my job, I'm an attorney. And there are times, ugly divorces, and people think they'll never work it out. And, you, and the judges go in the hallway, go in the hallway. And we're like, oh. And you know what? We get it done. And I feel like, you know, you need the right people. Maybe we need engineers in the room with us, and we need other people. And, and I think this is a cost savings, because I'm outraged that we have empty buses that are costing, I, I think, over a million dollars. I've heard different numbers. Um, all the buses that we pay, oh, do we pay over 800,000, Joy? What is, what's our bus thing now that we pay? Durham buses are $411,000 for a this year? year, for this year. And then what about sped buses? That's a half a million, but you can't count that in. I have no control over those. But a half a million plus 400,000. Yeah. Okay. So we $900,000 we're spending to get our children from point A to B. And we know that there's empty buses. So I want to know where's the outrage when we talk about 180,000. Well, what about the 900,000? Is there other ways to be creative here? And 
You know, I got to say, um, as an adoption attorney too, when I do deal with pregnant 15 year olds, what are the kids doing at two o'clock in the afternoon when no one is home, if they're not doing sports, they're not doing the APs? So it may not be so bad that school ends at three o'clock. Um, so that's just one of the issues uh, <laughs> that I have. Um, but um, you know, I, I think that the issues of mixing the, the kids and the buses, there are many districts that do that. I gotta tell you, kids are, are leaders and they're respectful. If you, if you, the Key Club, the high school has been working with um, um, the junior high school kids and the high school kids and you know, they, they're looked up and, and they're, they're, they're leaders and role models. And if they're not, they're off the freaking bus. You know, it's just, that's just the way it's gonna be. Um, so, Brian, what I would ask for you is to, to have, maybe eight hours is shocking to you, um, but, you know, I think that we could do that on a, a Saturday or Sunday. Oh, better. Yeah, even better. Um, I'm, willing to, I'm willing to give up my time with my kids and my work and not, not ask over a penny to do this. And I think have some of the teachers that are committed, and there have been, I have, you know, old emails from teachers that say, my kids, the kids are, t are sleeping in classrooms. So those are the, the educators that truly care about our kids and we can't overlook and if you spend any time and I think you have spent time in the high school um, if you look in the classrooms at 7 30 in the morning there are kids sleeping and it's just not right so I think for you to say that it's just like a, a, a small group of people that care about this issue to me I think there's a lot of people that care about this issue and I think at one day um, I mean, just like there were surveys about gay marriage, you know, at some point, you just can't survey. It has to be the right or wrong thing. And I think at this point, we're going to be at a point 10 years from now, we're not even going to discuss this because everyone's going to be having a later start time because eventually the science catches up and eventually it's starting to happen in Boston. My friends that are in more areas that are more expensive areas, they're, they're starting at 8.30, 8.45. The private schools, Williston, Deerfield, you know, so eventually we will catch up with it and it will be a non-issue. But you know, are we going to be at the, the lag? Or are we going to be at the forefront? So we, we are looking for leadership. And I, I would ask for a kind of um, working group to really get this done. So thank you. And I thank you for sharing your thoughts and ideas with me. I think what you're talking about, having a committee to work out the details to make this happen, would be the second step. The first step is for the school committee to decide if this direction we want to go or not and then they decide stretch you want to go, then we assemble a group like you're talking about and we figure out how to make it happen. Well, my understanding is in September, you're supposed to come up with a plan. And, that, and it's interesting, Stephanie. A proposal. A proposal. A proposal that was gonna hopefully cost nothing and come to them, to the, to, the, to the committee, and say, this is plan A or plan B, and this is what's gonna work, and the buses are gonna be here, and they're gonna show up here, and da, da, da. And whether it's starting the school at 8 o'clock, eight 8.15, 8 8.20, whatever the proposal was, you were gonna come up with a plan, and you know, it was either gonna be voted yes or no. So, so we need to have that meeting before your September, so we can have the nutty bolts in it, and then just say, and again, if it, if it can't work out, I will go away. Like, I will truly go away. But if it can work out, then you present the plan and you explain why it has to be 8.17 in the morning or whatever the plan is, um, you know, why it has to work. Um, so I, that was my understanding of the charge. And actually, when we left the meeting, there were some people that said, it's definitely going to happen September 2013. And I said to Barbara Solo, like, no, that's not what happened, <laughs> you know. But there are people that truly felt September 2013, the high school was going to start later. Um, so I think that we need to have that meeting in August. And I'm around. I will be here. Um, I think Andy will be here. I think Steve will be here. <laughs> I mean, we will make it happen to sit down. Um, and I think there's some teachers that would sit in that room with us. And I think Nancy Athos would sit with us, too, um, and, um, and figure out how to make this work. Thank you. So will you do that? <laughs> I mean, really. I appreciate the opinion. I'll have to consider it. I, I, I that's, I'm, that's yeah. not, I mean, and you have community buy-in that way as well, clearly. Um, I just want to well, say that I think they, that's, a, that in terms of actually make, moving this forward in an efficient, effective way, that's, that's a great idea. And my opinion is that it's more efficient to first present the proposal and then vet, if the proposal is voted and accepted, than to turn that proposal into a vetted plan. That would be the second step. Let me just ask, are you, is, the, is the proposal the school committee is asking for a general like yes or no, thumbs up or thumbs down, or is it, or are you looking for? It, they want to see a proposal for a high school start time that is no earlier than 8 o'clock. 
So, but that it sounds like detail needs to be included in that proposal, the kind of detail you were talking about, right? Well, as opposed to, I mean, the proposal, and a, you're making a distinction between a proposal and a plan. You know, sort of the plan right. will flesh well, out more detail, but the proposal itself has to include a lot of that detail, it sounds like. Well, the proposal had the, the, proposal had the detail of the bus schedules and the logistics of it, and then the plan will include communication with the families and um, put it in place for the following September. Right, so yeah. she's proposing this committee mm -hmm. be working with you to develop that actual proposal, which is the meat of the issue. And I heard her suggestion, yes. So. Right. I'm just wondering, Stephanie and other school committee people, would you vote on something that didn't have that level of detail? I mean, would you be comfortable voting on something? Or would you rather see a really well thought out, da, 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 here's what's going to work? Or not work? I mean, or you, he comes and says it's not going to work, and this committee agrees it's not going to work. Supposedly, the school committee is only here to be listening to what the community has to say, but I will respond to that. Um, I think that the school committee is going to need some level of detail. I don't think that we need everything fleshed out. I think that we're going to need a sense of what costs are going to be and what it looks like for all the levels in the district. Um, and I think that the that the superintendent is going to be needing to work closely with our business manager and our transportation director and um, flush, flush that out. And I think that it's about, um, I know Joy's gonna have to do an enormous amount of work. It sounds like it's already started in terms of um, combining bus routes and if we do this hub system then it's entirely different. I think that's a lot of logistics work that's not for a committee. I do think that um, it may be a, maybe more than a one-step kind of thing, but the charge was for the superintendent to come to us with a plan of how to um, start the high school at eight o'clock or later. And he's gonna need to come up with a, a plan that, uh, with a proposal that actually tells us that we, that we can do that for an amount of money that's going to make sense to the school committee or, or no money. Um, because it's clear that the school committee is going to be with the community on this one, that we're not going, going to vote for a plan that, that is going to jeopardize um, staffing and programming. So the, the, I think that the superintendent understands that there's a charge to come up with a plan that doesn't do that, and I think he's going to need to work with, um, with Mark and Joy and figure out how to do that. I think that there is a role for, for a, a committee to come together. I'm not sure that I agree that this is the time for it. I think that, I think that we need some level of assurance from those three that there is that there is going to be a way to come up with a plan that does this, and then we're going to work on the nitty gritty. Thanks, Steve. Were you sure next? <clears throat> I I'd stand up, but you'd uh, laugh at my <laughs> side view. <laughs> so uh, anyway, um, my name is Steve Harrell, and I've been working on this issue for quite a long time. Uh, and uh, I have five quick points. I hope they'll be quick. Uh, first of all, Nancy Athis did work very hard on a later start time for the high school for some period of time and went to school committee, subcommittee meetings and school committees, school committee meetings themselves. Uh, and she explained it and answered questions and had it worked out. It was a hub plan using the elementary schools. Uh, but the school committee did not act on it. They just did not vote. There was no real motion and it just went away. Uh, she felt discouraged and unhappy at the time. Uh, I don't know what's come over her recently. Uh, maybe it's just too much and she has too many other things to deal with. But I did want to, to mention that, that it's not a matter of none of the administration ever being interested in this. Uh, secondly, um, the lady up here at the front said, has there been a round table of staff to discuss this? There certainly has been. In 2008, the superintendent then, uh, Isabelina Rodriguez, formed an ad hoc start, start hours committee. Uh, it was made up of 16 people. Many of them were administrators. Uh, Mike Flynn, a respected member of the school committee, uh, was on the committee. Um, and Susan Wright, the uh, uh, school business manager who uh, was an excellent uh, organizer and leader. 
She has moved on to be, of course, the financial director of the city. She chaired the committee. Uh, I was honored to be asked to be on it as a community representative. Uh, it is true that in my place of business downtown, I've, I've uh, employed countless, countless numbers of uh, Northampton High School students and uh, now uh, also graduates of Northampton High, uh, including my own daughter who graduated from Northampton High in 2006. Uh, she originally got me interested in this whole issue. At any rate, um, has there been a round table of staff? There has. This committee submitted a written formal recommendation to the school committee and the superintendent in April of 2008 that the high school start time be moved to 8.30. Uh, here again, the school committee did not act. They just passed it over and just never, never took any action on it. Um, just quickly on the issue of uh, same ages on the same bus that this gentleman raised, uh, this is done in many other places in the country. And uh, about a year ago, for example, uh, the Bridgman School District in Michigan, uh, in, their, in their paper out there, the, the headline was, all Bridgman grades to ride same school buses. And then it goes on, the superintendent there says that this was done in a previous uh, district where he had worked and it worked out well, so he was instituting it there. Uh, it was really a matter of uh, to save money on the buses. It was not so related to the start time, but he did say, uh, incidentally, that he thought the start time of the high school, of the high schools there should be uh, 10 o'clock. But, um, <clears throat> so, uh, they have a hub plan similar to the one that we proposed here, and that was in September. Um, so last spring I thought, well, that's quite a while ago. I wonder what's happening. So I picked up the phone and got him on the line. He was happy to talk to me, and he said it's been working out great. He says there have been no complaints uh, from teachers, uh, from uh, the parents, from the students, or from the principals. And it's just been a terrific thing. Um, he said that the high schoolers are, are placed in the middle of the bus and the great uh, elementary students at the front and the uh, middle school students at the back. So the high schoolers act as kind of a buffer, but, but it works. And he went on to say that the high school students actually act as role models for the younger kids, uh, demonstrating things such as uh, staying in their seats and safety precautions. Um, so that was um, real good to hear. He said that the neighboring school district was going to institute the same plan uh, this September. Uh, so, and many regional school districts can't afford to send out a school bus to the different levels, uh, living miles and miles from their schools. And so this is something that's not new and works out very well. Um, also, uh, Gee, I thought I circled number four, but I don't see it now. So um, just to the subject of um, at earlier, uh, a later start time uh, equals a later end time, of course that's true. Um, but in the many, many, many school districts that have uh, taken up this issue, uh, the whole community is sort of up in arms and there's lots of discussion and letters to the editor and forums such as this one. Uh, and no one is really uh, real comfortable and confident that the whole community is in favor of this. However, the school leaders go ahead and institute it, and afterwards everyone loves it. They're happy. No one, none of these school districts want to go back to a former plan. Um, and also, um, my, they, uh, my, my own high school started at 9 o'clock and got out at 3.30. Uh, outside of Washington, D.C., and we had a full roster of all kinds of activities, sports practices, games, uh, drama. The, it was a big high school, 2,000 students, uh, and no one even, even thought about, oh my gosh, we're getting out at 3.30. There's not going to be time for the, these things. Um, of course it works out. Um, just at Holyoke High School in our area and uh, at Williston, Northampton and Deerfield, they have all these activities. The students are getting more sleep. It's also been shown in research that um, about the, the amount of time that the school start is made later is about how much time the students get in extra sleep. They don't stay up later because they have to get they don't have to get up as early. That's not what the facts are. Speaking of data and facts, 
So um, I wanted to remind you of that. And then also, uh, gee, it's great you get more than three minutes. <laughs> I, I just want to uh, second the idea that's been said tonight uh, previously that um, the school committee and the superintendent need to decide this is the correct thing to do for our community to, to face the music if that's what it comes to and make the change and work it out. I love this idea of going into a room for eight hours and not coming out till the thing is done. Uh, we just need to do it. I was uh, very unhappy, Brian, to hear you say that, well, if the school committee uh, accepts a certain plan, we're going to have to have more forums. It's not time for forums. We've, this, you said this is a third or fourth forum. There's been many forums before this. And you know, our discussion is over. We need to decide and to act and do it and take leadership. Yeah, I'm Howard Moore. I'm a Ward 3 school committee person, but I am speaking as myself. Um, the, the, one of the things that sort of occurred to me, a general thematic thing that's occurred to me over the last year is that, that really, you know, the school start time should be one of the last things that gets decided. You know, if you were going to design a school district, and we, we sort of had this discussion and then our budget shortfall kind of prevented us from designing, redesigning our school district this year. Um, but you know, the, you don't start by saying, and, and incidentally, you know, people say, well, we need, who do we consult? The reason we have the times we have now is because we used to have all the schools starting at the same time, and then in order to cut two thirds of the transportation costs, we changed the schedule. We didn't ask anybody if they thought 7.30 was perfect, and we still don't ask anybody if they think that, you know, 8.50 is really great until your kids turn 12, at which point, all of a sudden, you know, eight o'clock is much better. And then, three years later, all of a sudden, 7.30 is much better. And it's not just a half an hour earlier if you take the bus. It's actually a full hour earlier if you take the bus. It's 6.30. So we don't ask people if, you know, 7.30 was good in middle school for getting on a bus. But then all of a sudden, you become a high school kid, 6.30 is optimum. It's not. You know, every single family, when their kid changes levels, has to go through a whole figuring out how are we going to do this um, thing. You know, in, in grade school for us, it was the after school time that was like, what are we going to do? For other families, it's the before school time. And fortunately, the YMCA has a, you can pay for it, daycare at every single elementary school so you can pay for it to cover that gap. It's a gap that exists. And it will no matter what our schedule is because the work day and the commuting day and you know, people have different schedules. So you don't start with the time. What you do is you look at what are we trying to do here? We're trying to teach our kids. We're trying to let them participate in all the things we want them to participate in life, you know, and go from there. And I think we, that would be the ideal way to do it. And that's part of the reason for this, I think, for this sort of this kind of chasing our tail around and around on the, on the school start time thing is because every time you bring up the school start time, the reality is first you want to talk about a lot of stuff that's actually much more fundamental, like the homework policy, right, or like the long block schedule versus more courses so you can have more variety in coursework in the day. Those things are much more important to actually be talking about in terms of educating students than whether you came at 8 o'clock, 8.15, 8.20, 8.30, you know, I mean, relatively speaking, those other two things I just mentioned are just two of many, many, many things, and it goes on to curriculum and a whole lot of other stuff that's really important. And um, so that's part of why it goes around and around is because we're talking about transportation, but it affects stuff that maybe matters even more and that we really need to be having a discussion about. With that said, since we aren't going to have that discussion on all those things, which I think are really much more important, I think I, think, I know what I voted for back when we voted for this was that um, we were voting to have a proposal that would let us know what we were voting for for a later start time, and precisely that we would have a clear, concrete proposal, precisely because of all these questions. We, know that we didn't want to have, well, you voted for a later start time, and here it is, and it comes with a $2 million price tag, right? So we didn't want to have that. So what we did was we said, present us with a proposal so that we can give it a thumbs up or thumbs down, but we want a proposal for a start time starting after 8 o'clock. I think 
that's what I voted for. I, I don't know if it's what anybody else voted for on the committee, but that's what I thought I was voting for. So um, I think that's the charge, and I think it would be really good to have a larger group coming up with a plan. You know, as, as one of those people who was labeled one of those people before I was on the committee, um, and was really kind of dismissed because I was suggesting that, you, you know, the occupancy of the buses was not being fully utilized. And now two years later, I find that, oh, you know, the occupancy of the buses is not being fully utilized, and, and that was true. Um, I think it's really important to bring in other perspectives into this discussion because I think otherwise you really run into the problem of um, limited perspectives that, that what one person's set of assumptions are may not actually be all the assumptions that need to be plugged into a discussion like this. So I think it would be, I think the suggestion of having a, a group of people who are, you know, creative and intelligent and hardworking and plugging away at actually the nuts and bolts part of it, because we've already had the groups of people, we've already had the forums, I think we're pretty much fleshed out everything we can possibly flesh out short of an actual proposal so that people could say, that costs too much, it's too early, it's too late, you know, whatever it might be. Um, and it, in order to do that, obviously it requires you to be there, um, and the rest of the administration probably to be there. But um, I think it really should happen, and I think it would be really preferable to having a vote on something that hasn't quite been fleshed out, because then again it's a vote on a you know, pig and a poke. So again, that's just sort of my, you know, my own opinion. Thank you. I'll come back to you. Um, Michael Di Pasquale again. I guess I just would uh, concur that you're kind of well. You're in a, kind of in a difficult position, I would say. And, Thank you. But, but I don't get the sense, I guess, when I walked in here, that you're going to be able to advocate for this as strongly as you need to. And if you're going to have a plan that's due in a little over a month, you should really already be working on it. And instead of really referring to surveys and things, you really should say, I've been working on this for a few weeks, and we're getting there. So I'm not hearing that. So I think Renee's idea and other people is to get experts, people in a room, whatever it takes, the eight hours, I would be there too. Um, I think that's a good idea, because they're looking for a concrete, fleshed out plan in a little over a month. And that sounds like, I'm just reading between the lines here, that we're a long ways from having that. No. We're close to getting that? Absolutely. Uh, and what I've learned, I don't want to cut no, you no, off, though. Go ahead. So let me, you finish, and then I'll respond. No, I, no I'm, I'm happy if you tell me that, that that would be great. The only other thing I was going to say is that um, I disagree in a sense with Andy that the uh, survey was useless. I think it's useful for the people that want to now say that there's no consensus on this. And unfortunately, that survey's out. It's hard to put it back, but we were not surveyed either. There's two parents here, never got the survey. Um, so I think that's a dangerous piece of information. It's useful to people that will say that over half the people in Northampton don't want it. That's how it, that survey will be used. So it's useful for those people. Um, the other thing is, um, part of my job is really running community meetings for planning. I'm an urban planner. And uh, we talk and talk and talk. But at some point, the experts get up, and we start reaching consensus. And we start moving in certain directions. But we, can't, we don't take votes. We don't meet and meet and meet. We start pushing people to ideas that make sense based on what we're hearing, based on our expert opinions. We can't just say we're going to vote on this stuff. So the other thing I've seen is that these exercises where people meet and meet and meet, down the road, someone will say, we met 50 times. The community was very involved. Look at all the meetings we had. And we decided not to proceed. So the sense is that there was a lot of community input. Well, in fact, there was community input, but it's possible that the outcome will be that this won't happen, even though Renee, uh, Steve have been working on this for years, basically. Uh, it's possible that we will say, well, we had 50 meetings. Community doesn't want it. So the meetings sometimes are used to justify an outcome that maybe is uh, kind of already thought through by le leadership, maybe you, I don't know. But you go ahead, tell me, that, uh, tell me where the plan stands, I guess. Well, through these forums, I've learned a lot. And how we shape the proposal for the school committee um, has been determined from these meetings. And, like it or not, from the survey. Um, from that survey, I immediately stopped working on any plan that costs money. Because that's not what people want. 
And so that was going to be one of the ideas that was going to go to the school committee. If we just move the high school start time and don't mess with the other school start times, this is what it would cost and see if they wanted to do it. We, I now know that's off the table, and I only learned that through this series of meetings. So that's a very important outcome. Uh, this has been worked on for years. Are there plans? There are so many plans, specific detail plans, that have been put together that are good plans, from Joy, from Susan Wright, that, that have things put together. So this isn't going to be taken lightly. I'm not standing here thinking I might start on this uh, August 30th. Uh, we have some really good plans, but there are a couple of things that we have to accept. We have to accept that the three-tiered bus system is the most efficient and effective way to get kids to school. They decided that years ago, and it still holds true. Within the three-tier bus system, the best we can do is move the start times of all the schools in order to move the high school later. We have that flushed out. They had that flushed out a couple years ago, right, Joy? Yeah. So we have the plan. We can tell you exactly how the bus schedules will look if we move the start times of the other schools. Um, that is put together. And right now, that looks like that will be, most likely be the only option that will go to the school committee. Um, unless I learn something new between now and then. So yeah. why haven't you responded to my post? I gave you all this. Right, I was trying to. You said you would get back to me at the OK. Time. I was trying to save you, yeah. but I have your letter. OK, good. Read it. Uh, well, I'll read it. Let me I'll just give you the first three. And tell, maybe that will explain why I haven't responded to it. One of your ideas was totally eliminate busing to and from the high school. Your next idea was to make a collected community effort to carpool. And then your third idea, present, um, busing should be offered to the high school right now. It's within two miles. Maybe we should change that to three or more miles so we decrease the number of kids that we give a ride to school. I don't I see, I, don't I can go on, but none of them are good. No, I'd rather not read your letter in a public well, meeting. You know what? One of the proposals was to have the high school go on the JFK bus, which would not change the JFK elementary school's time, have two buses at JFK, this is as the Anthos came up with this proposal, have two buses from J JFK, which right now we have buses sitting there, but my request for public records would not tell me how long they sit there for, but we know they sit there, and those two buses would then go to the high school, and the high school then would start around 8.15. So there are, there are, there are, there's a zillion proposals I gave you in that letter, so you just pulled out three that you don't like, but there was. Well, I pulled out the first the, three. And that wasn't the first three I gave you. If you want, read the letter. Um, so the, the JFK proposal, I think, will work. And I'd like to hear why it won't work. And you said to me, you will respond at this meeting. So why won't that plan where the high school students get on the JFK bus, waiting at the same time as JFK, get, on, get at JFK, get off JFK, Two lead buses at JFK, then we'll go to the high school if there's actually that many kids. It might only be one bus. And then they get dropped off. Now what the problem with that plan is the pickup time. So why can't we have a pickup time after the elementary school run so the kids that need AP help or the kids that are doing you know, sports or activities that happen at the school can actually participate. So you have a 4 o'clock bus and right now there's about 50 kids that take the high school bus home. So I'd like to hear today why that plan won't work. There's a number of reasons why the plan won't work. Okay, First and foremost is if you're going to add a late bus, you're already increasing the cost. And that's not the no, direction the we're going bus. to go. It's not a, it's not, there will not be a two o'clock bus. There'll be a bus after the elementary school run, which is, I believe, around 4 o'clock. OK. So why won't it work in the morning? I can't combine high school and JFK. There's not enough room. Because you're counting all the bus passes. The response was that we couldn't combine JFK. Wait, um, hold on. Would you give her the microphone so people at home can hear? The response she gave is that there's not enough room My on JFK the buses. My JFK buses are loaded. Principal, please. Right. That's what I just said. The buses are full. When they're they full. pull in in the morning, they're full. They're full. Completely full. They're full. There's no extra seats on every Not really. No. Really. Not really, because we're talking about maybe some buses at, at the high school. And that's what we're talking about, having this. If you don't want to Please give house, her the microphone back. If you don't have an eight-hour meeting. It's not for me, it's for the people Okay. If you don't have an eight-hour meeting, a six-hour meeting, because all these forums, if you add up how much time we put in there, we could have had this meeting. So I would like to have a discussion when you say they're all full. Are there buses that have 40 kids in them? Is it dealing from the lead school? Um, you know, what does that mean when every single bus is full? Because, you know, there's 66 kids on a bus, supposedly, in how terms of, you know, how many kids can you put on a bus? 51. 
And are there 51 kids in each JFK bus? Well, that, we need to have that discussion. When I, and when I, I request, think we just did. No, we didn't, because you I, wanna, I actually want to know how yes, many, it. are there nine buses, and when you say pretty close, are there some that have 35? There, because I hear from JFK students that their buses are not full. So I don't know where those buses are and where those kids are coming from, but that's not what I'm hearing. And there are some high school buses where there are two kids, two kids in the bus. One kid on the bus. So you're telling me there's not one room? But if you count the passes, which are 199, that's where the problem is. But if we count that actually the kids that are 120 kids, and then if you add the extra mile, maybe a half a mile, OK? Because these kids, there are, there are districts that don't offer busing for high school, OK? So if you add an extra half a mile for the busing, maybe you knock out 10 kids. I mean, is it possible? No, that means I they walk to school. I can't imagine that the school committee would be interested in giving fewer kids a ride to school in order to move the start time. But if it's a, well, you know what? What is the line? Right now, what is it, a mile and a half? Two miles? What's the right now? Two miles. That was a discussion, two miles. I'm, I'm sure at some point people were shocked. Two miles. Maybe it should be two and a half miles. It used to be a mile and a half. So now you're saying it's a mile and a half. So who's making that decision? Those are the kind of nitty gritty things that we need to talk about. So, um, on a more relaxed level, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me just uh, make two quick comments. Uh, first about the JFK buses. I had two kids taking the bus and there was regularly uh, five to 15 seats, according to them, that were not taken in the morning. Um, secondly, about the survey, Michael, I didn't say it was useless, I said it was meaningless. It can be used. I think that it's, it's, people can find a way to use it. Uh, no, but the, the comment that I wanted to make, and I've had my hand up for a while, and Brian, I was mostly addressed to you, and, and your, your concern that any kind of uh, group meeting should take place after a vote by the school committee I, I'd like to hear from Stephanie and other school committee members how much detail they need to have flushed out. For instance, let's just suppose, and I'm not going to endorse Renee's proposal because I don't know enough about it, I'm not going to endorse any proposal, but let's just suppose there's a proposal out there for busing that doesn't increase costs. Okay, let's, let's just assume that. There and is I, I think yeah, on, you're right. Okay. Uh, and I think we, we, you and I talked about this on the phone. You thought that that was plausible. I don't know at the end of the day whether it will happen or not, but let's assume that that's the case. And, and you go to the school committee and you say, well, here it is. Here's our proposal. This is the way the buses go and so on and so forth, and we can, we can change the times on the basis of this plan. So what I'd like to ask Stephanie and others is, is, is that type of information sufficient for you to vote? vote or will, do, do you want to also know about non-financial costs? Do you want to know what impact it might or might not have on the indoor track team? The impact that it might or might not have on the tennis team? The impact that it might or might not have on theater, school theater, or on the robotics committee? It seems to me that for you to vote and endorse something in September, it would be highly desirable for you to know about the other potential costs. Are there costs? Uh, what, what are they? Who will be inconvenienced? I think that that's part of, part of the gestalt that, that you need in order to make some decision. So if, it, if that's true, if you want this other information in addition to the financial information, um, then I would ask you, Brian, whether you feel like you're in a position working with whomever you're working with to generate that information, or would it, in fact, not be desirable uh, for there to be a group with whom you worked uh, in, in order to flesh out some, may, we might not have all of the details, but to flesh out some of those additional questions. And would you finally, Brian, be more in favor of such a group if we can limit it to seven and a half hours instead of eight? <laughs> Joy, I have a question. Um, do you have a, a number of students that take it in the morning versus the students who take it in the, in the afternoon? And the reason I ask is I have to buy a bus pass for my daughter who never takes it in the morning, but always takes it in the afternoon. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, yeah. and we talk about numbers. Renee was talking about, right, what numbers are this and that. I think, A, 
do we have to pay a full pa full price if we're only using half the bus? And then B, can, will that help us figure out how many seats are empty as we move forward? Well, I'm paying the full price for the bus. Does that answer? Okay. So so again. <laughs> but the bus company doesn't give me a discount for the number of kids that were using the bus. But if you only sold half the pass, you say that you could. Yeah, I'll give you, I'll give you half the pass, but you you're could, you're jamming me for the whole and I. I Shouldn't use that word. Hey, you're beating me over the head for. Uh, uh, oh, not that word either. Okay, um, but you're charging me for a full pass. And when when I when if my kid shows up on in the morning, the bus driver is going, "Where's your pass?" No, get on the bus. So you're charging me a full pass when I know that the kid's only going to use it for half. Right, and you can imagine. And, and the reason the, I and the I'm reason sorry. I say that is, okay, so now I that's how it works in our house. Then I go to work. She goes to work. Other one goes to elementary school. The real nightmare is figuring out all the afterwards. Who's going to get this one? Who's going to get that one? Where's this one going to go at that time and this time? So it's just one. I'm just curious to say to, to Renee's plan if we if we had a, a, a more clear cut number, maybe that two buses is one bus. I'd like to respond to that for you, Joy, and you can Thank you. take it after me. Um, you can imagine the situation you just gave multiplied by the hundreds of families that use the buses. There are families who will say, well, we only take it at night, we only take it in the morning. I always take my kid on Fridays, can I do 80%? Um, there are any number of situations, and we're going out of town for six weeks, can we, can you prorate the bus pass? It, we could, it, it is, really, there really are too many variables to factor exactly how many people are on the bus at any given time. That's why we use general numbers. How many kids have a bus pass? And we now know that the number of kids who take bus passes does not equal the number of kids who ride the bus. So we can sort of hedge our bets and say the number of kids who ride the bus is far lower, so we can overbook the bus according to the number of passes and still have the requisite number of bodies on the bus. But to factor it out to the individual student per day, per morning versus afternoon, is a sort of calculus problem that we're not really interested in taking on. Stephanie has a question. I can't speak to the details of it, but it also has to do with there's a difference between what we know in terms of the parents who pay for bus passes and the kids who get the, uh, the free and reduced passes, and we have no way of knowing which kids are getting on the bus because they're, they're getting passes just based on their economic status. So it's very hard to calculate all that. Um, and they do. And they do, but we don't know how many of them are using it. Don't know how many use it. So they get a free bus pass, but some don't use it. it. So they can use it sometimes and not others. Thank you. We have 11 minutes in this forum tonight. That's fast. That's why for months I've been going to school committee and asking why we don't take attendance. I called Chicago, the bus company that we get the, our bus from. They said most areas, they take attendance because in the Midwest they're trying to save money and sometimes they actually reduce how many buses they get. And I said, that's a great idea. Can we do it in Massachusetts? Of course you can. You have to have the transportation supervisor ask the bus drivers to take attendance. And I've been asking and asking and asking. It's on the blog. It's on your blog. And um, I don't know why it hasn't been done. And that would, we would have that data. And it's unfortunate that it hasn't been done for now September. And again, this has been going on since April that you've had your charge. So. I was hoping today we would actually get the proposal. So when you say you're close, what, what proposal you're coming up with? And if it's changing the elementary school later, I can tell you that, that won't fly either. Because that's already been, people are really angry about that. Because I don't know how parents work that have elementary schools in Northampton. So if anything, make that earlier. Thank you. I'm just picking up what Andy was saying. I'm just predicting how this could play out. There's going to be a room of people, or you're going to present this plan, and there's going to be a, a lot of reasons why it's going to be difficult because of the tennis and all these other things. But who's going to stand up in that meeting and advocate and show the studies and say, I know that. Just as they changed the start times because of the budget, there was no question. The start times had to change, whatever, how many years ago it was, because somebody was in the room, an accountant, and said, we have to save $100,000. I don't care about the tennis team. $100,000, change everything. Someone's going to have to stand up at that meeting and say, I don't care about this. I'm representing the kids. We have to change it. If it's the best interest of the kids. We have to change it. No, I don't know who's going to be standing up saying it. It's not going to be you. No, you don't know how many times that's happened. 
We've had the research, we've had Steve, we've had Renee, we've had uh, medical but doctors. But who's going to be yeah. leading the charge when you, they're going to tell you the tennis team, the wrestling team, the parents that work, the parents that don't work, the kids on the bus. Someone's going to say, I don't care about that. This is my recommendation for the kids. Who's going to be advocating for that at that meeting in September? That's a good question. Thank you. No one will be. It'll be in the paper. These things all came up. They didn't pass it. Because no one was at that meeting advocating for the kids. Who's it going to be? The advocates have been at multiple meetings sharing the they research. They need to be in their room mentioned. when the decision is made. My guess is they will be. I know Steve has very good attendance at these meetings. But it has to be somebody higher up. It has to be somebody in the government. It has to be, it has to be you know, mandated. It has to be like health care. It's got to be, we care about this. It has to be done. Who's going to be in the room saying this has to be done? That's a very good question. I want the answer, I guess. I don't have it. <laughs> It, it won't be me. I don't think it's going to be you. It won't be me. Absolutely not. So you don't believe the science of I absolutely believe the science. You believe the science? Absolutely. Okay, so where, what's the problem? What's the disconnect? Why can't you ask people? Even saying, <laughs> you can say, I, I agree with the science. I want what's best for our kids. You can, if you believe that, you need to say it. I believe the science. I don't believe it's what's best for our kids. Can you tell I believe why? that you would change the high school start time if you needed to do a substantial turnaround to a high school that is failing or in need of improvement. We have a highly successful high school, one of the top academic high what schools the in the state. We don't what about need the a kids substantial who are turnaround. Not you can ask for my opinion and allow me to give it, or you can interrupt me while I'm giving it. It's your choice. I, I, I don't think that's fair to say because you have some kids who are succeeding. That, that's not some, not, most. We have a highly effective high school with successful students measured on national tests. Would you like, getting every, into the kid, finest would you universities. like every child to succeed? Of course we would. Okay. That's, I think that should be the standard. And if all the science says that they will improve academically, you're saying that our kids are some kind of superheroes that this will not affect. That our kids are already achieving at the top of their game, all of them, and that this more extra sleep is not going to affect them. Is that what you're saying? This is not, what I'm saying is this is not the only way to improve a high school. This is one of the elements to improve a high school. And what our teachers and our students have done over the past five to ten years at the high school is excel academically in a fantastic way, in a measurable way. And if we can make it better for them, is that not a good thing to do? We continue to make it better every year in many ways. This is only one way. Is there another way that uh, all the research and all the science is saying this will be better for teenagers. It will help them academically and emotionally and, and, and every other way. Is there any other thing like that that we've said, that's whatever, it's not good enough for our kids. I, I don't get it. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> I have uh, an Amherst School Committee member several months ago said that he saw he had not seen any studies of a cause uh, showing a causal relationship between a later start time and academic achievement or improvement. <coughs> <coughs> this struck me as nuts. I went home and quickly put together seven studies that show this causal relationship very clearly. I put each one on its own page. If anyone would like a copy of this tonight, I have some extras. But the one I want to mention in particular, if I can find it, well, I'll just explain to you. Um, in Edina, Minnesota, uh, which is a suburb of Min <laughs> Minneapolis and a very good high school, uh, they changed their start time from uh, 7.30 to 8.25 or something like that. Um, and that very next year, their top students, the ones at, with, at the 10% top level, their SAT scores that one year changed significantly higher. Hundreds, the, the verbal stat score changed, went up 156 average points. So your claim that we have a great high school with great students is true. They could do better. They could do better. 
Now, but I think our main concern is for the ones who aren't in the top 10%, as Val was saying. Uh, I understand that the special ed students have a great deal of trouble with the early start. We should be thinking about them as well. We have four minutes for final comments. Okay, I love having last word. Um, also, you know, when you talk about the high achievers, I, you know, I had a high achiever in the school, and and you, what you're not seeing is the costs of these high achievers, and and seeing their friends, and the the seven or eight or nine AP classes these kids are taking, and the anxiety and the depression and um, the pressure for them to you know, get in bed at 9 o'clock. Because what's amazing to me is high school students need 9 hours and 15 minutes of sleep. And so when, when a basketball game starts at 7 o'clock, which is what happens at the high school, or 8 o'clock, or it's a way team, what we're pushing our kids to do and the pressure to get into these top schools that you talk about, and, and that's what's counted. And I see it as a high school advisor with the key club. And I see they have 20 minutes for lunch. Lunch starts at 10.24. That's what our kids are eating lunch. So when are they eating dinner? <laughs> you know, they come home, they eat a full meal, and they're eating dinner at 6 o'clock. I mean, this is just wrong for our kids. And I was a high achiever, and we also started early. And I, I just think it's, it's sad to me. And when these kids go to, high, go to college, then they finally relax. They're just like, whoa. They, a lot of the classes don't start until 11. So I, I really hope that you could connect that even our kids are doing well, it's, a, it's such a cost. And I think that um, if we could start at 8, 8.15, 8.30, I think we'll see a lot happier kids. And we had the 9.30 start time that we had during the school year without the storms. They just had a normal thing because they were doing NEAS review. You wouldn't believe the kids in my neighborhood when I walked my dog. They were, they were like, hi, how are you? It was like, it was like turning on like a black and white TV to color. So I mean, I, I just think that these high school students should not be tortured every morning and I feel like it is waking your child up at 6.15 or 5.45 is, is, is child abuse. So, you know, you want to... All right, final comment from the student in the front and we will bring the meeting to a close. Um, <laughs> um, I'm a sophomore at Northampton High School and I just think that the, this whole thing is kind of like, I feel like I've lived, this was my first year, so, and I did fine, you know, and I just feel that there is no need for any of any change because it seems like we've been doing this for a good amount of time. I'm not saying change is bad, but I'm not saying that we're doing bad right now. I'm just saying that if it's working fine right now, why change it? All right, and we'll bring this to a close. Um, all right, one minute and three people with their hands up. Alden, Andrew, high school student. Yep, let's just go around. He will have the last word, I promise him. Um, somebody was asking who the advocates for the kids are going to be in the room. Um, the members of the school committee, we're all advocates for the kids. That's the reason we're there. Um, if, you, if you're wondering why we serve, that's why we're there. If you're wondering why Brian has been a teacher and a principal and a superintendent, because he's an advocate for the kids. So we're going to weigh the evidence and do what we think is best. And we'll listen to the costs and, and make a decision. But please don't forget why we're there. Thank you all, and I wanted to echo that too. I'm Andrew Schell for the Ward 2 School Committee member. And I did want to correct one, which I feel is a slightly dangerous misperception out there. If, if we say, if we don't change the start time, we're not doing right by all of our kids, that's not really true, because there are elementary school kids we have to consider, middle school kids we have to consider too. Um, and I think that's, we can't lose sight of that. I think that's a, a big picture item. Thank you, gentlemen. And the final word from the high school student in the back. All right, so um, I'm a junior. Like, well, I'm heading into junior year. I'm not. I, I wouldn't say I'm doing that well in school. I'm. I'm. I'm a bit below decent, but we're all we're all good, just enough. But I mean, I'm sure that a later start time would be beneficial to most kids. I'm just. I'm like. I'm not saying that it's not. If it happens, it happens. Okay, I'm cool with it. I'm cool with waking up waking up an hour later. But I wouldn't. It, it wouldn't matter to me that much. Like, even if it stayed the same, it stays the same. I, I want it to stay the same. If it changes, well, it sucks to be me. But, <laughs> but, but I mean, yeah, like, like Andrew said, we adapt. We, we can change accordingly. It's just that, in our opinion, it would be better if it stays the same. I, I'm not going to disregard the research. I'm sure that we would all do better if we changed to later start times. But most of us would like it to stay the same, and that's just my opinion on it. Not out of being stubborn? 
but out of that's what we're used to, and it's it's. Uh, you're yanking, it, you're yanking the rug right out on us. None of us like change. All right. I would like to bring the meeting to a close. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Mr. McLaughlin, for the microphone. Thank you, school committee members, for being here, and administrators, and all community members. Have a good evening.